Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this uh, video, we're going to uh, show you a ATV that uh, was converted by Barefoot Motors in uh, Oregon. Uh, this one happens to have a little issue, and so we were called in to take care of that. Uh, and so we'll give you a uh, a close-up of this vehicle and discuss uh, how it's set up and uh, a little bit about it. Uh, first off, uh, uh, the reason that we're uh, working on this vehicle is that it uh, doesn't have a auxiliary battery. It has a DC to DC converter and it basically had been left unattended and the thing completely drained the pack. It's normally an 80 volt pack. It currently measures, uh, I think it is 10.7 uh, volts we measured the other night. So anyway, went and picked this up uh, last night after hours and so uh, got in, it was dark. I was hungry and tired so we just stuck it in a bay overnight. So now we're going to unload it off the trailer and kind of take the covers off and see what we have. And so we're going to bring you along, show you how this uh, uh, ATV was uh, put together and give you a little bit of information. Uh, for starters, uh, it, uh, like I said, it's an 80 volt uh, system uh, consisting of 100 amp hour cells. Um, this is a two wheel drive version. Uh, but they made a four-wheel drive and a two-wheel drive. Uh, top speed is 30 miles per hour, has a maximum range of 40 miles. The four-wheel drive version weighed 880 pounds. The two-wheel drive version weighs 770 pounds. And the MSRP was uh, $12,900 for the four-wheel drive and $11,900 for the two-wheel drive. Barefoot Motors was only in business for two or three years. They are no longer in business. Uh, the owner of this vehicle told me he thought he purchased one of their last units. He doesn't have a manual on it or anything, so, and I haven't come across one in any quick little searches on the internet. So we're going to uh, pull this apart and do some investigating, see if we can resurrect this pack. Uh, and if not, uh, we'll see what the owner wants to do, but most likely we'll end up replacing the pack with uh, uh, some new, new cells. So let's get it off the trailer and pull off the covers and take a look. Okay, let's give you a little uh, tour of this Barefoot Motors ATV. The dash actually showing a display now. Didn't have a display earlier. Hmm. Take a look at that. Here's the motor and differential. Rear mono shock has. Uh, dual disc brakes charge port storage across the back here accessible right here battery box down the center Like I said, this is a two-wheel drive version, so steering components here. Looks like the controller there. Battery charger. DC to DC converter. And like I said, the battery box right in there. So there you have it. And this is... Uh, what they called 
the EUV M1. So let's uh, pull it into one of the shop bays and we'll take her apart and see what's going on here. When we remove the seat, this is what we see. We've got a couple of relays here, fuse block, pot box, shunt, a main contactor. So let's uh, let's pull off this other cover and see what that exposes. Okay, pull the side skirting off. This is what we get. Uh, Another top panel. You can see the DC to DC converter. The other components we mentioned earlier. That we found by taking the side skirting off there. That exposed the uh, battery box. And we've uh, lifted, loosened this or undid this and raised it a little bit so we get the clearance between the charger and the top of the battery box and so now uh, we've removed the bolts for the top and so now we're going to lift off the uh, top of this battery box. So here we have the top of the battery box removed. We have a little acrylic piece sitting on top which uh, we'll remove and we'll take some uh, readings on the batteries here and it looks like we may be able to remove these batteries uh, out the side here maybe we'll slide the whole box out a little bit give us additional accessibility but kind of having to figure out as we go since we don't have a manual on this and not something we've ever done before. Looks like they have a fuse right here. As you saw on the other side a lot of extra wire for their BMS. Um, so we'll go ahead and do some voltage readings and then what we're going to do is we'll try to um, charge these one cell at a time bring them up to a base voltage and see how they react uh, under that attempt and then we will um, bring it up as a pack once we have them all bottom balanced so we'll continue to pull things apart and take some readings. All right, we'll get a last little shot of the uh, barefoot motors, the EUV M1. This front rack right here in here, uh, bolted down here, that is where the BMS was located, which I have sitting on the back right now. We'll get a closer look at it in a second here. But we removed all the cells. There's all the spaghetti from the uh, BMS. It simply came out a plug out the front end here and went to this box that was on the front. Another shot of uh, the controller. They've got a contactor, pot box, fuse block, a couple of relays. The um, DC to DC converter and charger are in one unit. Let's see if I can get a little better shot of it. Right here underneath sat just above the um, battery box and just below the controller. A 
close up of the motor. Quite nice shocks on this rig that uh, has a top speed of 30 miles an hour. I think they kind of overspent on a few things. One thing I think they greatly overspent on was the uh, BMS. Not necessary. Definitely uh, proved that in this instance where uh, the battery pack was uh, depleted and it wasn't by a common draw. So you can see the innards of that. Innards of that. Uh, there's some cooling fans on the other side here. So there was a line uh, that came in here for each cell. And then there was uh, the 12 volt connection for your two fans. Totally unnecessary. And here's what, uh, what happens. We had 24 100 amp hour cells that ranged in voltage from 0 to uh, 2.1 volts. Most of them were like 0 0.14, 0 0.44, 0 0.07, 0 0.83, 0 0.78, 0 0.08, 0 0.60, that type of thing. And how do you get a series wound, series wired pack to come up with such varying uh, cell voltages? It obviously wasn't discharged as a pack. It was discharged because of a faulty BMS and an unnecessary uh, component in the whole package. You can see what happens when you severely discharge um, these lithium cells. They've swelled substantially. That's, uh, that's them sitting next to each other. <laughs> There's quite a gap there. Let's see if I can get this show up on camera. You can see that, that swell. See if we can. There it is on a flat surface. Quite a, quite a swell. I was, however, able to uh, charge these and bring them up to a, a base voltage. And now we'll see what the owner wants to do. Um, putting these back in the battery box is going to be tough since they're so swelled. There were some spacers in there um, that we could pull out but I don't think they're going to be enough to accommodate the degree of swelling on this pack. Look look at all those how far off they are. So recommendations toss the BMS, replace the cells and enjoy your ATV. But we'll see what he wants to do. Just wanted to give you kind of the conclusion of of this video, what we're going to highlight here is to um, what uh, what can happen with the BMS system. Uh, at least, his, you know, at least it didn't go up in flames and he lost his house. Uh, instead, he, he lost a pack. And it's probably about a three thousand dollar replacement here. And so you got a little overview of the now defunct Barefoot Motors. Uh, EUV M1. This is the uh, two wheel drive version. And I uh, thank you for watching.